Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another course vlog. Hey, we got a treat for you today. We're out here at Spanish Hills Club out here in Camarillo, California, just south of Ventura down here. This course is on a little peak of the hill and man, it's got a whole lot more terrain than I thought when, before I came out here. Hey, if you're new to the channel, please click subscribe down below. I'd love to have you back here week after week. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and we'll see you out there on the first hole. Here we go. Now, this club has the word hills in its name for a reason. You find out quickly straight out of the gate here on the first hole, sending it right off the cliff and down the hill. Make sure you pick your club precisely off the tee. This is a somewhat of a funnel fairway here, so left or right should kick back towards the center of the fairway. But with that severe drop down into the fairway, man, accuracy is at a premium. This green is just hanging on down at the bottom of the hill, surrounded on all sides by bunkers. It's a test of precision out here. Now this is just a four iron for me off the tee, 380 down the hill. I expected this to play under 350 yards and I was correct. Here about 125 yards from the flag on the left hand side of the fairway, I was able to find a good lie as the member who invited me out here, Roman, he let me know right away that they stopped watering all the rough outside of the fairway lines, which really made for some irregular lies and honestly, it made it really rough out there. Instead of some manicured grass that's long and fluffy, it was truly rough. Now, 511 yards for a par five is gettable, but with most of this golf course, you're gonna see it's all about keeping the ball in play. Up the hill and around the corner for this par five. Use those two bunkers on the left hand side that we just flew over as your aiming targets off the tee. That's as far left as you probably want to go and hopefully you'll have a good look into this green. It's a long narrow shoot that drops off down to the left hand side and into those trees and it does curl around slightly to the left to reveal this green perched up there and protected again on all sides by bunkers. Oh boy. Now I tugged this drive just a little left of my eye line and so I was told to cut the corner and I aimed over the corner and well, that is about as lucky as you get from cutting the corner. Hey, it's a par five and uh, maybe we can go for it in two. Let's see. Now here I was under 200 yards and try to hit a seven iron up and over the trees and it did not work. Straight through the trees, it knocked down well short of the hole. I was about 60 yards here, which is a nice three quarter lob wedge for me. Should have a nice distance on this shot, but boy, it just ran out on me. These greens were perfect out here today and they really were bouncing hard on that first bounce but because they were running perfect that means you can see the putts rolling smooth and if you can put a good stroke on it you should have a good look now the hardest hole here on the front nine is this shortish par four heading straight back up the hill. Plenty of trouble down the left hand side of this hole that's protecting any bailout as the hole will cut off shots down that right hand side and you will not find your ball. Now just one bunker on the right hand side protects this green, but it's uphill all the way and very, very tricky. Trying to play the cut off the tee with the driver. This one was heading down that right hand side and got caught up in the rough here on the right. So much for not having manicured rough. This was pretty perfect over here on the right hand side. And you know what? It just held my ball up perfectly. A nice gap wedge to the center of the green here. I'm looking for a nice long putt as hitting it close is just not really my forte these days. I can hit the green, but man, knocking it close is just a whole nother challenge. A comfy two putt par, three pars in a row to start the day. 
and we head on down to the first par three. The black tees give a really cool angle here on this par three. 183 yards down the hill is going to play about 175 adjusted from that black tee. And today, well, that pin is right in the middle. 175 yards should be a perfect eight iron. Now I typically like to play a little turnover draw with my irons, and that one just stayed out to the right. Just missing the green on the right, these are perfect green surrounds, and with how grainy this grass is out here, I was not comfortable chipping it unless I had a perfect lie, so just lagging on down there with the putter was the way to go. Now this fifth hole tees off from this shoot of trees and really opens up a lot more than it looks from that tee box. The bunkers down the left is as far left as you want to go or else your ball is going to be dropping off severely down towards that eighth fairway. If you get it straight and far enough, you're going to catch a speed slot and it can roll down the hill a good 40 to 80 yards, potentially all the way down to the bottom, leaving yourself under 100 yards to this green protected by water. Just a smooth cut. Once again, I was trying to catch that speed slot, but the ball jumped through the fairway and into the rough for me. Now this was a very strange lie in the fairway as it looked like the ball was sitting down, but ultimately when I came through and hit it, man, that ball hit right on the top of the club face and ended up about 25 yards short. This was far enough out I needed to use my wedge and thank God I nipped it near on perfect. Down there to three feet, tapping it in with the wedge and that's five pars in a row to start the day. Now this long par three sixth hole is a brute. I do not understand how it's a double digit handicap. This thing is difficult because it's just so far. 250 yards up the hill in a par three. Well, this is all I got in a four iron. Now my two iron will go about 255 to 260 in the air. So that was too much club for this hole. I was really only playing for the front of the green here. Not a great chip shot from the front of the green. I needed to hit more wedge there to get more rollout. But if you can clean it up and roll in the five footer, it really doesn't matter. Six pars in a row to start the day and we can head on up to the top of the hill and shoot it off down, down this seventh hole. Oh man, all the trouble here is on the right. Bunkers galore and a little bit of a forest, but there's plenty of room out here on the left to lay up a shot off the tee and give yourself a full wedge into this green. More trouble on the right on the green. Avoid the right-hand side on this hole. Now, after six holes of nearly flawless golf, I went down the right-hand side of this hole. And, um, well, this is going to be brutal. A chip out of the trees here. I'm, I think I'm using about a four iron here normally to chip it out. And this lie on the back of the bunker was as horrible as it looks. Now I tried to hit a big flop shot there and well, I bladed it right down into the bunker. Another shot from the bunker, that's number four. We're over the green now and I gotta come back down towards the flag from the back of the green. That there was an excellent chip shot. Given to me by my partners for the double bogey, I will take it and run on over to this eighth hole. A gorgeous, gorgeous par four. I think this is my favorite hole here on the front nine. Just the styling of it, the way it looks off the tee. A gorgeous flowing dog leg up the hill and to the right. Avoid those two bunkers on the right, but you might have enough to clear them and get it down here into the big part of the fairway. 
that bunker down the left, you should be able to see it off the tee and use it as a sight line. But you're not going to be able to see the green until you're down there in the fairway and you're going to see a very inviting surface, not too much difficulty up there. Now after the block right on the last tee box, this was a dead pull to the left, straight through the fairway and up onto the fifth fairway. I just had to chip something down onto our fairway and well, I topped it. But you know what? It was a good top. That thing still went 40 yards down into our fairway and I had a look at it. From 95 yards, I stuffed my lob wedge to three feet and well, Rolled in the par putt, because why not? That is a working man's par. Holy moly. Coming off the double bogey, that felt like gold. Now the final hole here on the front nine is a climbing par four all the way up to the clubhouse. 360 yards, don't be fooled. This one climbs up the hill nearly as much as number one flew down the hill probably 400 yards adjusted with the slope. Just lay out any club you can into the fattest fairway on the course, and you're gonna have a good look into this very wide but shallow green sitting below that gorgeous clubhouse. Finally got the cut to work for me again. I aimed over the corner and, well, cut it off beautifully. Had only 61 yards into this hole. That's that three-quarter lob wedge that I like to hit 60 yards and, well, hit it just a little long again, about 65, just back here onto the fringe. But I did have a look at it. Oh, oh man. That's all she wrote for nine holes. Hey, big shout out to Roman here for having me out today. Really, really appreciate it. We'll see you in the back nine next week. Later.